I got the milk. We're Sweet. ready. Thank you. Rick, you hear about Cuphead season two? Uh, no. Yeah, not already. Sweet. Guys, 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 oh my god. House of the Dragon. House of the Dragon, we're ready for House of the Dragon today. All weekend, I've been absorbing just that the, the, the Song of Ice and Fire. We don't need these two, these two books, but you guys remember Game of Thrones? Eric. We got so much to cover. We watched Game of Thrones. Didn't that like kind of fizzle out? There's a new, there's a prequel, there's a prequel series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not hyped, I'm hyped. I, I got, I'm hyped for cereal. Look at this. What is, what's, Magic what? Spoon. Magic Spoon, mm, okay. yeah. Well, I have to admit, that's a good counter argument to what I'm talking about. Tell me about Magic Spoon, what is Magic Spoon? I got fruity, it's my favorite flavor, and oh. it's got zero total sugars. Okay, fruit, okay. And 13 to 14 grams of protein mm -hmm. per serving. You mm -hmm. got like a frosted mm -hmm. flavor there. Yeah, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Peanut butter. Ooh, peanut butter, I like peanut butter. It's pretty yeah. good. Huh. If you had a spoon, we'd share, I guess, but. If I had a spoon, I always have it's a spoon. Early in the morning. Can I have some of yours? No. Calvin, can I have some of yours? No. Eric? All right. So where'd you guys get this? You can go to magicspoon.com, use code word BLINDWAVE, and get $5 off. This is fruity, Eric. They also have chocolate. Oh, uh, hey, chocolate? Oh, no. Oh, sweet. Man, the chocolate's really good. Mm hmm Huh. This is crazy. I, this thing has 13 grams of protein per serving? Yeah. Yeah. It's low carb, zero sugar, gluten-free, grain-free, has natural flavors. You have to They all do. This just, I mean, it tastes exactly like the cereal that I had when I was a kid, watching Dragon Ball Z in the morning. Yeah. It was great. Why didn't you get, when, when did you guys get together and do this? I guess while you were reading. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> All right, guys, now that we're done with breakfast, mm. I'm Aaron. I'm Calvin. Rick. Mm, Aaron. And we are back with House of the Dragon. I guess back with Game of Thrones in general. But yeah. we're here for the first time with House of the Dragon. Uh -huh. we and we're going back in time from Game of Thrones, setting up the tide. Gotta get back in time. Targaryen? Targaryen? Yeah. Shit, I, I forget everything. Targaryens. <laughs> oh, Targaryen. Hey, it's a really nice shirt, Calvin. You should check that out. Yeah, I like your shirt, too. Thank you. Uh, guys, uh, over the weekend, I talked about this during the trailer, but I kind of did a, not a reread, but a kind of look through of the Fire and Blood novel. A I have never read it. You guys have never checked those out? You've wa all watched Game of Thrones to varying enjoyments, right? Uh, but we're going to check out this new show because one of the things I think we can all agree was that Game of Thrones had an amazing production, had amazing music. It did. It had really great actors. Mm -hmm. it had dragons. It had dragons, and from what I understand, <laughs> they're trying to take all the shit you liked... And just get rid of the shit you didn't like, which was primarily for most people the writing D &D. of the final season. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm excited by this personally, having read Fire and Blood, I read it a long time ago, but I'm super excited that Fire and Blood is written from the point of view of a maester, and he's not exactly correct, right? He has two sources to write this entire history book. One of them is a priest, and the other one is a court jester. Sure. So sometimes in the writing, you don't know if he's you know, An the, unreliable yeah, the, narrator. The victor writes the history, right? So he's Polybius. So the cool thing is, is like, if you've read Fire and Blood, you know kind of what happens, but you don't know the details because we don't know if we can trust the priest or the jester. Right? So are we being told a story from a maester or are we seeing the truth? So this is the truth. This is what actually happened. <clears throat> so, so if it's not exactly to the book, then, then it's like, you. oh, that's, yeah. that's why. And George R. R. Martin is very intimately involved with this one, so you can say that. All the storylines are happening. If you try to say, like, well, that's not what George wanted. It's like, motherfucker, well, he's behind the camera. So he wasn't involved <laughs> in Game of Thrones? Uh, he was for the first couple seasons, and then uh, not so much. And then they lied to us and said that he was. They lied so to they us. So they could be lying to us here. You never know. I mean, the Meister lies, right? Old Town, all those people. You <laughs> sure. never know. Sure. Can we trust him? I mean, probably not. Laird and uh, the other guy were, like, kind of there for Turtles, but then they kind of weren't there for mm, Turtles. Yeah. It's layered in uh, whatever the guy's, other guy's name is. I can't think of what it is. Onion, like, he's like an onion. He's a lot of layered. Or... No, la layered. Was oh, one of the, oh, one the, of the oh, authors oh, and comic oh, creators of the Turtles. The, the Onion Knight. Oh, turtles. Dabbers. Yeah, in Dabbers. TMNT, the movies, yeah. they're like, oh, they brought them in. But then they're like, no, you can't do this. And I like, a... get it. Guys, this is the first episode of House of the Dragon. What does that mean? It means that anyone, anyone can check out full length over at patreon.com slash blindwave. <laughs> And there's it's, a link below. There is a link below that you can go right there. It's normally something that we offer for our supporters over at mm -hmm. Patreon. For all of the stuff that we do, 
But for the first episode of this season, you can check it out, whether you're a patron or not. So check out the full length. We're watching this on HBO Max. We're excited to check out this new show. Please consider subscribing and following along the season with Blind Wave. Subscribe. In those days, House Targaryen stood at the height of its strength, with ten adult dragons under its yoke. Ten. <laughs> In the year 101, the old king called a great council to choose an heir. <clears throat> Over a thousand lords made the journey to Harrenhal. Oh, we're in Harrenhal. Oh, okay. The Prince Viserys Targaryen remain Prince of Ragnarok. Rhaenys, a woman, would not inherit the Iron Throne. The queen who never was. Mm-hmm. Hey, I know what to 172 years. I like how they do that. Just in case you didn't read it all, the TLDR is 172 yeah, years good. before Daenerys. Yeah. I.e. this is not a world where dragons are, uh, rare. <laughs> the Red Keep! Yeah, dude, the music. I ran through this on our treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The real world place. Yeah. Yeah. This music's quite good. Yeah, it is. And I like that the dragon design isn't just Drogon repeated like it was before. Yeah. Like, that's brand new. Very Daenerys looking. Yeah. I'm so happy they have an actual saddle. Because Daenerys didn't look very comfortable on the back of hers, but the saddle was pretty cool. Yeah. Rhaenyra, you're late. King's Cup Baron must not be late. Leaps people want them. <laughs> so he has her coming to all the council meetings. The cost of the tournament is not negligible. <clears throat> might I like this guy. Until the child mm -hmm. is in hand. There's a boy in the queen's belly. I know it. Mm. And my heir will soon put all of this damnable hand wringing to rest himself. Ooh. God, me, God. It's all right, sir. Who's sitting in the throne? Mm -hmm. King's brother. <laughs> you spend more time in that bath than I do on the throne. This is the only place I can find comfort these days. Cool shot. Has there been any word from your dear brother? <laughs> Not since I named him commander of the city watch. <clears throat> I'm sure he will re-emerge for the tourney. I've lost one babe in the grave, mm. but two still births and two pregnancies. And wow. Better. I keep trying for that boy. I was going to say mm -hmm. they're betting a lot on this and the odds of both of them surviving are not tremendous. The fact that she survived this long. So you watch the gold cloaks? Yep. Cool. You're a pack of hounds. <laughs> Sated. Home for the hunt. Oh. Alright. My brother's city has fallen into squalor. Beginning tonight, King's Landing will learn to fear the color gold. <laughs> hmm. Damon's uh he's an interesting guy. What'd that guy do? He was in the street! There was beating, a curfew! They're just beating everybody? Was there a curfew? I don't know. Don't the law is here! Look at his fucking <laughs> helmet. I love that helmet. Ah! <laughs> oh, why? He was a thief, Aaron. Are you sure? I don't know. Reasonably, he doesn't have an arm. Well, that's a raper. That's a penis! That was some balls. Dark sister. It's just a card of body Bring parts. Bring out your dead! The prince cannot be allowed to act with this kind of unchecked impunity. Right? Brother? He still has blood on his face. <laughs> My prince, I don't Making a public spectacle of wanton brutality is hardly in line with our lord. Our city should be safe for all its people. I couldn't. I just hope you don't have to maim half of my city to achieve this. <laughs> what a response. That's He's prepared. It's nice to see that Viserys seems like he wants to be a good king. Not so much Damon. Sex time. Yep. HBO quota sex. 
All he gets is a bronze bitch. <laughs> no. <Well> say. <laughs> when I look at the fine knights in these lists, I see a group without equal in our histories. Queen Emma has begun her labors. All right. <laughs> that looks a whole lot better than it did. I'm excited to see the standards. Start also. the jazz before I piss myself. Start it. Oh. Jesus, this is pretty high energy jousting. I have. Archer. I've seen men do that in real life. Ooh, this is an amazing shot. shot. Holy oh. shit! That was fucking awesome. That was amazing. <laughs> Holy. How do they do that? You just do it. It was so well the stabilized. Cameraman. <laughs> it was so well stabilized. <laughs> I'm told Sir Christopher is common born son of Lord Dondarrion and Stuart, but other than that, and the fact that he's just on horse to both of the Baratheon lines, I really couldn't say. Huh. Common born. Yeah. Chouse is pretty rare. He must be really good. Targaryen banner. <laughs> oh fuck. I like his armor, dude. It's yeah. so intimidating. He's a, for me, he's a character you love to hate. But look at that helmet. Wow. <laughs> That's a different helmet than before, right? Well, it has like attachments wing. now. He used to have the wing before. It's much more showy for the joust. Yeah, and the red looks so good on it. That's a uh, high tower, right? I think. So that's Otto's house. His son. Holy His shit. eldest son. Oh. Didn't unseat him. Neither fell, yeah. Oh! Wow! You... Oh, shit! Don't think that would work. <laughs> He's a dragon, Rick. <laughs> of course oh, not. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Well, he skidded look, on his face. The horse is okay. Yeah, the horse is fine. That handle that he has is so familiar looking. Um, it's the, it's the knife. Is it the cat's paw? Yeah, it's the cat's paw. Huh. Oh. Yeah, this is also happening. The infant is in breach, your grace. Oh. Uh -oh. to turn the baker face. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Never take your helm off. It's a little shitty. <laughs> That's loud? Well, they have armor. It sometimes becomes necessary for the father to make an impossible choice. There is a chance that we can save the child. A technique is taught at the Citadel which involves cutting directly into the wound to free the infant. You can save the child? We must either act now or leave it with the gods. You know that he wants to know what the sex is. It's probably gonna end up being like a girl and he's gonna sacrifice the mom. Though I guess sure. it's both or the child. So it's a good proper helmet right there. Didn't unseat him. <laughs> Jesus. Dude, that actress. Oh, oh, jeez. Dude, he's Tony Hawking it. He is. He's grinding. Oh, oh that's embarrassing. What? <laughs> Rode the rail the whole mm. way. Wait, so Ooh. if you lose that, you get to fight this? That's what happens? It's like wrestling, Aaron. You can do whatever you want. Man. Oh man. To stunt double. Oh. She's alive and everything. It's... Oh my god, that's so much blood. Yeah, he's on the top turnbuckle now, Rick. <laughs> oh 
shit! That's why you don't gloat. Hey, he kicked his sword! Oh, he's got something else. He does. You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Beat the Dragon Knight at his own tournament. I don't think he's done yet. <sighs> well, at least the baby's alive, I guess. Congratulations, your grace. You have a son. It's born. Had you and the Queen chosen a name? Babe. I don't know. Did he? Was it making noises? Or? Yeah, there was like a turn right there. It was like a choking or something. Uh, like when the baby dies. Burial by fire. Mm -hmm. Like a dragon. It did die. Yeah. You gotta say it. Dracarys! Should you point? <laughs> they understand. They know. <laughs> These recent tragedies have left you without an obvious heir. The king has an heir, my lord has. Despite how difficult this time is, your grace, I feel it important the succession be firmly in place. If Damon were to remain the uncontested heir, it could destabilize the realm. <laughs> yeah. The realm or this council? No one here can know what Damon would do where he came. <laughs> no one can doubt his ambition. Damon has ambition, yes. But not for the throne. He lacks the patience for it. The gods have yet to make a man who lacks the patience for absolute power, your grace. It's true. Great that is great. That's great. The king's firstborn His child, daughter. Yeah. Rhaenyra. A girl. No queen has ever sat the Iron Throne. Well, Rhaenys was yeah. the only child of Jaehaerys' eldest son. She had a strong claim at the Great Council. And she already has a male Just heir. Just moments ago, you announced your support for Damon! If we cannot agree on an heir, then how can we expect a My wife son are dead! I will not sit here and suffer crows that come to feast on their corpses! Did not expect to like him as much as I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was worried Targaryen King was going to be yeah. someone I didn't care for. How is his grace? Very low. Which is why I sent for you. I thought you might go to him. He's a wife. Mm -hmm. Offer him comfort. Whoa. I want a model like that in my room. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, he can play D&D &D like a motherfucker. He's building the title sequence for Game of Thrones. <laughs> when my mother died, people only ever spoke to me in riddles. All I wanted was for someone to say that they were sorry for what happened to me. I'm very sorry, Your Grace. You think he carved all that? Okay. I mean, he was carved. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's a hobby. Hobbies. This is all legal. Man, hearing that shit about himself really took the pep out of the step. A little bit. <laughs> And he got beaten at the tournament today. Yeah. Before we begin, Your Grace, I have a report I feel compelled to share. The King and Council have long moved my position as next in line for the throne. But dream and pray as they all might, it seems I'm not so easily replaced. Uh, in the middle. <laughs> he toasted Prince Balon, the King's son, styling him. The air for a day. The air for a day. Did you say it? We must all mourn in our own way, Your Grace. I have only ever defended you! Yet everything I've given you, you've thrown back in my face! You've only ever tried to send me away to the Vale, to the City Watch. And the blood of the dragon runs thick. Then why do you cut me so deep? I've only ever spoken the truth. I see Otto Hightower for what he is. An unwavering and loyal a hand. cunt. Otto Hightower is a more honorable man than you could ever be. He doesn't protect you. I would. From what? Yourself. I have decided to name a new heir. I'm your heir. Not anymore. You are to return to Runestone and your lady wife at once. Oh, shit. I'm living it 
lots of armor. <laughs> Cut yourself again, buddy. I like how dangerous this throne is now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Aegon the Conqueror's enemies. Gave up all their swords. Like, I never felt like it was that dangerous of, like, stabbing oh, yourself yeah. in, the, in a, the other show. Sweet, you know? wow. Damn, that dragon was huge. Yeah, it was. Jesus. Couldn't straddle that neck. <laughs> when you look at the dragons, what do you see? You haven't spoken a word to me since my funeral. And now you've seen your king's guard down. Answer me. I suppose I see us. Tell me. Everyone says Targaryens are close to gods and to men. But they say that because of our dragons. The idea that we control the dragons is an illusion. There are power men should never have trifled with. Targaryen must understand this to be king. Or queen. Mm. You are the very best of your mother. And I believe, as I know she did, that you could be a great ruling queen. I promise to be faithful to King Viserys and his named heir, Princess Rhaenyra. I pledge fealty to them. I shall defend them against all enemies in good faith and without deceit. This is no trivial gesture, Rhaenyra. Dragon Cell is one thing, but the Iron Throne is the most dangerous. <laughs> Literally. And shall defend them against Whoa. all enemies in That looks pretty good. And without deceit. Dude, look at look at him. him. Yes, they like, did it! I like the color. You should definitely confiscate his dragon. I'm so happy. His dragon's supposed to have that really long neck. It's like mutated a little bit. Aegon foresaw the end of the world of men. <laughs> Just to begin with a terrible winter. Gusting out of the distant north. Thine Rick on Stark. Lord of Return. When this great winter comes, Rhaenyra, all of Westeros must stand against it. And if the world of men is to survive, a Targaryen must be seated on the Iron Throne. Aegon called his dream the Song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> there it is. Yep. This secret has been passed from king to heir since Aegon's time. That's so interesting. Come in. Was so that another dragon dream? Aegon the Conqueror's dragon dream. Yeah. Rhaenyra Targaryen, Princess of Dragonstone, and heir to the Iron Throne. I hear the music. Shit, the music. Yeah. Guys, House of the Dragon first episode. A lot of setup for uh, brand new characters. Mm -hmm. What'd you think? Hmm. It felt good. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Sure. I mean, I kind of feel like beginning of Game of Thrones where I'm trying to learn Definitely. where we're at and what's going on. And like, with it being so far back, like there's so many differences of stuff where I'm like, okay, where are we yeah. now with this? And who are these people? And how do they connect to whatever? And should I be thinking about original Game of Thrones series, or should I just not think about that at all and just try to focus on what sure. they're giving me here? You know, uh, I really enjoyed, you know, Calvin and I went through the first Game of Thrones show, and I very much enjoyed that, but it was also, I had a, uh, a certain frame of reference, because I had already seen and read the books at that point, so I did this week, I really did try to go and, like, I, I want to nail down many of these characters so that we can just fall back if we have any questions, so if there's any characters you're interested in, like, I think that we can uh, talk about them without any spoilers. Oh, I thought Rick raised his hand. Well, <laughs> sorry. you did no. mention... Uh, uh, I was wondering who... Uh, it's, there's a Lord Cor Corliss? Corliss Valerio. Um, which I, he is, is a very interesting character anyway. Yeah. And I was just like, what is so, his role on the court? Yeah, so a little bit of history. We can just talk about it. This will color you know, uh, conversation throughout the whole season. The Targaryens come from a place called Valeria, right? Which is across the sea. Uh... And there's about, well, I don't know, five or six generations removed from Aegon the Conqueror who took over Westeros. So, old Valeria, there's a thing called the Doom of Valeria, like a volcano or something. Where the dragons originated, where the dragon riders originated, all that shit blew up. We don't know why. The Targaryens were able to uh, escape that because they were on Dragonstone by that point. They had settled somewhere else. So now, suddenly, they're the only people left with dragons, right? 
The Valerans are another family from Old Valeria, but they're not dragon riders. They are shipbuilders, and they're, they have a, a powerful navy, right? So the Valerans, or however you say their name, I don't really quite know exactly, they rule the seas of Westeros right now. The Targaryens rule the skies. So that guy is a very good friend of the Targaryens, and they're actually kind of related by the nature of where they come from, the, their homeland. So, and also yeah. the fact that he married a, yeah. a Targaryen. So it's, they're just a very, very close ancestral family friend, is what you would say. Okay. So that's what that guy is. So, but what is he on the court though? Like so we have on, the hand of the king. I think he's master of ships. You would have like I would say he's master yeah. of ships. I then. believe so. I don't know for sure. But he's also married to the queen that never was, the sure. king's older sister. Those two families, you know, they have an island pretty close to Dragonstone where they operate their ships out of. Those two families kind of intermarry every once in a while. So he's not a Targaryen. Though. He's not a Targaryen. He's he a, is from Old just, Valeria. He has white hair, though. Still. He does. Yeah. Well, yeah. So from Old like, Valeria. Had Valerian. They all had yeah, bloodlines. Yeah. Now, in the book, they're also, they're supposed to look pretty much exactly like Targaryens, and that's why one of the reasons they can intermarry and helps keep that dragon line uh, pure. Bloodline I'm looking pure. right. Yeah, uh, they've went another way with this, which I think is kind of interesting, and I, I, I like the actor so far. And we did see a two, like a small glimpse of what looks like their two children. Yeah, and they mentioned that they have an heir, like the queen has an heir if she were queen. Yeah, yeah, she so, has a son. Yeah, but you know, yeah, I'm those two, those two kids like, would be Targaryens. So. You have like Ma- I remember like Master of Coin, you yeah. had the Hand of the King. You had like yeah. you had like all these different roles. I'm like, what does he do? Because he yeah. seems to be very vocal in his thoughts and stuff. But I'm like, more so than like the Maester. Mm-hmm. I was just wondering what role he had. That I wasn't sure. Like, I believe ships don't seem mas- like- I believe it's Master of Ships, but it's also I mean the Navy's pretty important, right? Sure. But it's right. also he's just a really good family friend. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think Navy's important, but. Mm-hmm. In the scheme of what they were talking about at the time, it didn't yeah. seem like the category he needed to be. Not really. No, he was yeah. just like acting as an advisor to sure. the realm, mm-hmm. not specifically to his own department. Yeah. And again, I'm not sure if he actually is master of ships. That just makes sense to it me. It just makes the most sense. Like I don't see that other guy with the beard, yeah. being master of ships over him. Yeah, like something... I would say he's like master of coin or whatever. I believe. So. I think it was master of laws or something. Maybe the, the strong guy they called him something strong. So, sure. Yeah. Lord and then Trump. maybe the guy on the end is Master of Coin, maybe. on the other side of the yeah. Grand Meister. Sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the Grand Meister, uh, we have Otto Hightower, Hand of the King. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the Hightowers, they rule. We briefly saw his brother whenever they were swearing fealty, but the, the Hightowers rule Old Town, <clears throat> which is like, if King's Landing is the capital, Hightower is like the cultural center. It's where the church is, and it's where the Meisters are. And Meisters are that group that send people out to every house in the world, you know, yeah. as advisors. So, Sam if Wendell, you think yeah, about it... Sam Wendell, yeah, yeah, it's where Sam went. Yeah. Right? So that's a pretty mm-hmm. powerful family. They don't really, you know, interact in terms of war. They're more trade, and they kind of, you know... They have there, the there's, a, uh, there's a conspiracy that they might be controlling Meisters and, and Seps and stuff like that, too. So, he's an interesting character, the Hand of the King, because... The entire time I was watching, I'm like, I think I kind of like him. And then when he sent his daughter to the king that night, I was like, I didn't like that. Yeah. Sure. But I mean, that's also my modern sensibility. Yeah, <laughs> like that's a smart move. It is. It is. Well, in that sense of where, where they're at and what they're doing and everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially, I, I place this as being like old knights time frame yeah. for, you know, our actual like yeah. history. Yeah. And that was like, there was younger ages of wearing yeah. off and all that kind of stuff yeah. so like for that time that's what happened oh, sure. it feels dirty yeah. right it, now it does it and as much <laughs> as much as it's like an uncomfortable scene to watch we have to remember the original Game of Thrones show aged up their kid actors from season one like five more years because it was kind of uncomfortable to watch these very young children sure. do these scenes but yeah. that's so, George R. R. Martin trying to be authentic I did like the uh, like the king did the king I, I didn't think I would like yeah he seems Reasonable to an extent. Viserys. I, I was saddened by the choosing the the baby over the mother and stuff, yeah. but it also felt like the choices came down to lose both or maybe save the child. Sure. And it's like, well, if you're going to lose both anyway, and I mean, the kingdom, 
if you're game. thinking further. Sure, yeah. Those so, that, like, I, I understand it's a tough de- decision to make. I mean, that sad, doctor said, also, like, one like, or the other, though, right? Like, it does kind of feel Well, no, he said it comes to a point when a father has to make a choice. Yeah. And the choices that he laid out was that we can... There's a, there's a surgical method where we could save the baby, yeah. but the mother will definitely die, or we leave it in God's hands, yeah. and they could both die, or they could both live, you know, if she, if she birthed it. So. And I suppose she also just, like, kind of said, can this be the last time? Yeah, because she's... they've lost so much. Yeah, she's not going to provide any more children. So, yeah. like, is there divorce in this? Like, um, I mean... Is he going to have to get her killed anyway? It's very frowned upon. Sure. But you could, so, you if she like dies that. here in, in childbirth... Yeah. It looks better on him yeah. if he has to get someone else to find another heir type of thing. There's yeah. a well, reason. Yeah, if he pulls a Henry and gets her beheaded for witchcraft. Yeah. Because she can't have any children. Yeah. So, I and mean, then he can now have an heir because he finds someone else. So I get what you mean. But, but I also don't feel like he's that guy necessarily. Yeah. He it's feels really a little bit. He feels a little bit more. Like, yeah. He chose to go with his daughter and stuff, you know? He's not like, well, I will find someone else and make an heir. He's like, here's what yeah. I have. Though I guess that decision could be changed later, right? If he does yeah. have a son, then that becomes the heir, I suppose. It's possible. I, I yeah, want to say too, like the, these characters in the book, it's more of like a history book, like being told from the point of view of a meister. So like, or, like they can kind of play with the personalities, the likes, the, the dislikes. Sure. If you like them or not, they have a little bit, bit of freedom for that. And I fully expected to come in, come into this and be like, well, I don't like that guy. But yeah, at sure. the end of the show, I, w- I felt bad for him in the funeral. Yeah. And while they have like the. Uh... They have the hand of the king sending the daughter. And yeah. it's like, well, that feels dirty there. Yeah. When she's talking to the king and the yeah. things she says and the way he responds, I didn't feel that he was looking at it like, ooh, kind of things. I know, it was yeah. more of like, I'm mourning and I he appreciate you sad. sitting in here. He was and comforted. Talking to yeah. him, yeah. If something like that happened, if she was sent to Damon, it would have been a different story. But this is not, you know. Sure. Yeah, yeah. and I can see that. Yeah. I have enjoyed Damon so far. Sure. Yeah, it's definitely interesting because he, has that he definitely has that Jamie Lannister piece of shit feel. Yeah, but there's a moment in that funeral when he's looking at his brother where you're like, he, you know, uh, I, he probably still cares about yeah. his family. Of course, he's a Targaryen. He's sure. just, a, you know, he's a piece of shit. Well, and the things he, <laughs> the things he says is like, "You dishonor me because you're not choosing me to be here with you. Yeah. You have pushed me away for ten years, yeah. rather than letting me be the hand." And while I can be like, well, I can kind of understand why you might not want him as a hand. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, but I kind of get king. I kinda Well, get you don't want him it. to win over favor while you don't have a son. Uh-huh. Like, you bring him in once the secession plan is yeah. solid. Yeah. yeah. And that's a brilliant reason to show the, uh, the choosing of the king at Harrenhal in the beginning of this. Like, we establish right now... We don't have women as queens in this. It's never happened. We're yeah. five or six generations removed from Aegon Targaryen. And women are respected. Sure. But they're not, you know, like Aegon Targaryen. Like uh, the Conqueror, he, he had three dragons. He had him and his two sisters. And without those two sisters, he would not have conquered. So they respect women, but they don't want to be ruled by them. Sure. But having it there where it's like, well, it could have been him or a woman. Yeah. Here now, he's like, I need to choose a successor. He's like, well, I... Almost lost out to a woman. Exactly. Passing on to a woman, yeah. maybe. I don't know. But that's only maybe, after. Maybe it'll work, but I don't remember if. who. Cersei was a queen yes. of King's Landing. Mm-hmm. Did, I'm trying to remember if they said when she made it like first queen of anything. She was I not. I don't remember yeah. that being a thing, so. It's, at, uh, at first I was like, is this going to be a thing where it's like, this is what we're setting up, but yeah. obviously it won't happen because. Damon doesn't want to do it or something. That's it, what I felt. It, like. It's obviously a, a you know when they make these type of decisions, are we going to have a woman rule, rule the Seven Kingdoms? That kind of stuff was explored in Game of Thrones and talked about its history, but every time it happens, it's never easy. So Cersei has to, if she wants to do it, she has to claim it and leave no doubt that she's queen because they will do whatever they can. Even Daenerys, who wants to be queen of you know of her throne has to think that Jon Snow is also a Targaryen and people might not care about her. You sure. know, that, that has to be in the thought process because this is a patriarchal society. It, it goes with, uh, there was a show I was watching over the weekend that there was people going in to become cops Yeah. and uh, one person just older and people are kind of looking at him like, you shouldn't be here trying to become a cop now, you're too old for this. Oh, sure, okay. Right? And uh, a conversation happens between him and a, a woman police a woman. officer who is like, Eventually, you'll prove yourself, and everyone will just look at you as being a cop. Yeah. But I'll have to prove that I'm where I'm supposed to be every time I meet someone new. Unfortunately, be- every because day. Of that. Yeah. And I feel like that kind of reflects the same idea of like a, a woman yeah. running the, the kingdom and stuff. Of Sure. 
they have to prove and make sure there is no doubt that they are able to lead yeah. because they are a woman. We've never had a woman be a, yeah. be a queen or whatever of our yeah. court yeah. and stuff. So, Well, and it's interesting. These characters aren't just one note because, yeah, he was he's desperate for a male heir, but he has her as cupbearer for his council meetings, meaning she is observing. Sure. Absorbing politics, you know? Yeah. So he wasn't, like, saying, like, well, she can't do it. Sure. He's, this isn't, like, just a desperate, well, well that didn't work out, so I guess I'll go for my daughter because my brother's an asshole. Yeah. Like, I think he really thinks he, she could do it, but it's not preferred. I kind of would like it if it was, if you had that same sense, but the reason he had her be cut bare is because he couldn't have her sit on the council. And sure. it was a way of having her yeah. kind of in the dialogue without yeah. being in the dialogue. And it's like, I've been kind of yeah. getting you in there. But he was still wanting a son, or that's what was needed or sought yeah. after, I guess. And it kind of, just a little bit reminds me of when Arya was Tywin's cupbearer. Yeah, the things it definitely. That she learned, right? Just being around it. Reminded me of that. And she has a little bit of, like, Daenerys and Arya, like, mixed in. You know? She wants to be a knight of the realm. Yeah. Rick, how do you feel? You've seen all of Game of Thrones, and obviously the show wants you to remember all the great things about Game of Thrones, but they want to tell their own story. Like, how do you feel about, like, this introduction so far? I mean, it's. Like the classic problem mm-hmm. in this time period, right, of secession. Yeah. Like so, I think that's a good place to start. Like, yeah. There's a lot of intrigue and different things that you can do there. Yeah. Um, I am curious to see. Like I'm curious to see what warfare is like with dragons. Yeah. Like at its peak. We got to see a little bit of that in Game of Thrones, in, but not necessarily in the world where you have saddles on yeah. dragons and yeah. they're meant to be dragon riders, not just well, this person has learned it. Over the last year or two, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Or this month. <laughs> yeah. No, if we they have, have, were like, if they have ten fully grown dragons mm-hmm. and ten dragon riders, it's going to be a lot more effective than one dragon rider and yeah. two riderless dragons. Yeah. You know, I thought it was really interesting what Viserys said about like he doesn't think that the dragon thing is good. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. He said that there. And a, a, a power, power men not, should never have trifled with. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting thing because yeah. I would have just assumed Targaryens were all like, "Ah, dragons are our power." But well, I mean, it's it's slightly alluded to, but the cool thing about having that in front of the skull is that Balerion the Dread, the biggest dragon, was still alive when he was a boy. Yeah, and he actually rode that dragon, and when that dragon died, he refused to ever ride another dragon. Oh, so really? he has this mindset of like he used to ride the biggest, baddest dragon that the Targaryens ever had and once he lost it I think it's interesting that he has this point of view now that, with that separation that's kind of cool you know it's like, King Viserys right King Viserys and he, so he's the one who's not ridden since he died then? he hasn't ridden since Valerion the Dread yeah. now was that and also, Valerion lived for hundreds of years was he the, saw the fall of old Valeria yeah. yeah was there a dragon and Daenerys's brother were they both named kind of after uh, right? Viserys is the same Viserys name as and Viserion or, Viserion right. is the name of the dragon yeah. and they're both based on like I, I, the dragon was based on the brother, and the brother was based on him, right? Yeah. Like, the name-wise? Yep. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just like we that? saw uh, Rickon Stark. Yeah. Yeah. When that happened, I was like, I kind of wished... The one guy was, like, almost like Boromir. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, Boromir Stark. Yeah. That would have been a fun yeah. idea. <laughs> that would have been good. <laughs> uh, Rickon Stark. And it was cool to to have that right when they were talking about the the evil from the north. The, yeah. Straight up. That's really that's cool information. Night to me. and winter that blows so, from the yeah, north. The idea that the, Aegon the Conqueror had a dragon dream like that is yeah. kind of game changing. It is. So the heir the heirs have passed down this idea of a Targaryen has to be on the throne to stop a great evil from the from has the north. to unite the world. And it's a secret. Yeah. It's like whenever you become president they bring you in and tell you all about Area fifty one. <laughs> like it's a, like no one knows. So it's a cool way of tying in with that stuff there, but also like all the characters don't need to concern yeah. themselves. But know? also, like, it's only Targaryen heirs. So whenever you have uh, the Lannisters and Baratheons coming Baratheons, to take over yeah. and everything, then they don't have that same story thing. I don't think Robert taken, Baratheon would you know? care about dragon dreams. He took <coughs> all of those skulls and put them in the basement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it makes sense that they a new ruling comes through and has no idea what exactly. the story is. It's, that's a really cool wrinkle that I don't think it's in the book but again George R. R. Martin is working on this show I wonder if that's something that's a big one would that still be passed down in any way mm-hmm. I don't know I, all the court died before right like when Baratheon came in 
I mean, if you um, think about Viserys and Daenerys in the, in the Game of Thrones, like, they know they need to go back and be rulers. Yeah. Maybe that's one of the I wonder if they subtle reasons. Them, right? Maybe they don't know yeah. the full thing, but they know that their family has talked about, we must, we're these closest, like how, to, closest to God-like characters in the sure. show. How young were they when Baratheon, when Baratheon took over? Well, Viserys was, a, like, very young and Daenerys was a baby. Yeah, it's even younger. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if there was like any kind of, like they just told them stories of, yeah. of like, oh yeah, this, yeah, this I don't one think day this truth. will happen or something like that. You know, mm-hmm. these dragon dreams. Uh, what's his name? The Meister from the the Night's Watch. Eamon. Uh, uh, I can't remember his name right now, but Meister, Meister, turns, Meister Eamon. Yeah, yeah, turns out he was a Targaryen, right? Yeah. He gave up being the king at one point. Um, he talks about in one of uh, uh, he talks about his brother in the novels and his brother being consumed by dragon dreams and every single one of them failed him and he died terribly. <laughs> right? Every dragon dream failed him? Like the dragon dreams like the, the Targaryens believe there's something special, but they're not always. Like you follow that dream and you can burn. Or you can burn others. Have we heard of other dragon dreams like from anybody before? Uh, not necessarily. We've had, like, stop, talk about, like, the Mad King and I remember why the he Mad believed King. the stuff that he believed. And I remember, like, Bran had yeah. seen, like, the past and yeah. different things and stuff, too, but I didn't know if we had any other dragon dream kind of things. And we, we've seen, like, just straight-up magic in that blood. Daenerys surviving the funeral pyre, pyre is a magical event. Sure. I thought it was interesting here that uh, Viserys is, like, putting his hand over the fire, like, to see if it will burn or if it hurts. Maybe he's doubting himself, or maybe he's trying to reassure himself, like, I am Blood of the Dragon. Sure. While looking at Beleriand yeah, the Dread. His yeah. old dragon that's no longer there. Do you think his injury is anything that's a actual issue, or do you think it's really just kind of shedding light? Like, the finger being cut of this throne is yeah. really just made of swords and stuff, and he's just got an infection from, like, being yeah. stabbed by the, the throne. I don't know. Maybe someone doused the throne with poison, and he accidentally <laughs> cut himself. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Maybe. You know, the Mad King was always cutting himself and getting pissed off. Yeah. Sure. No wonder he was angry. I just wonder he was if always, like, bandaged up and shit, you know? I didn't know if it was, like, meant to shed light on that yeah. or if it was, like, there's actually an issue with him and, you know. Like I imagine he has... Yeah, I imagine he has to die and then the big issue is Damon feels he has a right to the throne. Dragon Knight. And then we have the daughter, yeah. uh, R- something with an R. Ray. Renara. Renara. Yeah. Well, what like, the guy on the council say, like, whether ill fate comes to you by design or by chance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, I wasn't sure what that was meant to be. I'm really curious to see what we do in this show, because Fire and Blood is a very long time frame in that story, right? Like, this is a generational story, so I'm interested to see if, like, will we keep these same actors, or will it be like The Crown, where they get much older and we're going to see them other actors, you know? Sure. I want to see a young... I'll tell you what, what, I hated when that happened to Matt Smith and The Crown. <laughs> uh, Tyrells, right? Yeah, Was it yeah. The, the whatever of Roses or whatever? Lady Elena. The old lady, Elena. yeah. The queen I, I of wanna, Roses. Roses. I'd love to yeah. see a young her if, if, they do, bad, yeah. if they do something. Sure. I know. I don't care if she's 170 in the show. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll believe her. <laughs> you just want her I just want her to learn here. She's one of my favorite characters. I love her. Yeah. She what would she would look like her James Bond appearance right now? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> um, what's with the balls? Yeah, and, and like I don't the, mean they're... I don't mean the ones from when the city guard is going crazy. Shit. Yeah, Not no. That. At but the, like at every the meeting, council, every meeting, they I, all uh, had a ball they put in a plate. I don't know what they are, but I imagine it represents the Arthurian idea of like putting your <laughs> sword, sword on the, on the table. table. Probably, I, I don't know. I feel like I remember there being something with Targaryens and marbles. Like, Those are big like, marbles. Like, dragon glass, marble, like, you know, I don't know. I I have to research more, but I also don't want to, like, sure. go to in where I'm ruining the story for myself. It looked like an eye. It kind of yeah. reminded me of an eye. Yeah. I was just curious on what they were, but that's, yeah, I was thinking that, yeah, too. Was like, I like the, that idea. We don't have the meeting until everyone's ball is in the table kind of mm-hmm. thing. or Kind of the, but kind of the old, uh, old thing about, like... I don't know, like having a speaking stick. Like whoever is holding the stick gets to speak in and hand it over to someone else kind yeah. of thing. In a like modern but technology everyone has their thing. own way. <laughs> It'd be really cool if like, when you sit down for your meeting, you put that there. It's like your pearl that just saves all the meeting information to yeah. it. And then you take it out and you're like, aha, now I have all the information. Maybe we should get pearls for, for our Let table for the season. Here's all my notes. It's like, excuse me, I have the speaking marble. <laughs> 
Yeah. They take up less table space than swords, and it's like it's been what eighty years of peace or something like yeah. that. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. I wonder if that's why all of their armor is so decorative. Yes, yeah. or Unless... if it's just fantasy and that's how fantasy be. It's sure both. Uh, the Targaryens are very much... I mean, like, they have to make the world believe that they are these gods, right? Like, they control yeah. nuclear weapons. Like, that's... And they, George R. R. Martin says, like, dragons are nuclear weapons. And to be I fair, say, like, most of the time Damon is riding something, it's not a horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But even his horse had the armor. Sure. You know? Like, I, I think that it's one... It's not really meant to be practical as it is meant to intimidate and to impress people at his turns. Yeah. But like, too, like, if he lands on yeah. the the red dragon, yeah. like he's impressive. Sure. He looks like the the witch king, yeah. Agmar. <laughs> like, I mean, the second thing is like you just you want to look cool, you yeah. know? Like, what do I'm wearing? It's bullshit. I'm the king's know? brother. I get if, to look cool. If it was tolerated that I could wear dragon armor, I would do it every day. You won't even wear a suit on Friday. Exactly. So it's not what. tolerated. It is. What did you guys think of the uh, the tourney? Very violent. I mean, very violent. <laughs> I feel like there need to be more rules. <laughs> it's definitely... It's in the honor of Damon, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably more what um, Robert Baratheon was wanting from yeah. his tourney. His was a bit lackluster. He's pissed off at his. Yeah. He's never drunk enough. Huh. Now, I will say, like, it was very visceral, but I thought it looked good in that point of view shot from the horse... Was, was so good, I will forgive. Like, well, the fight was a little cutty. Yeah, it had a lot of, like, very strong yeah, visceral I, hits. But for me, for my money, a little too cutty. I definitely was like, the hell's going on sometimes? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I can see a big yep. hit on the shield. But I'm like, what's he doing? What's going on? Why if, are we going back if anybody point? involved with the editing is watching, please, God, let your stunt people do their job. They are, there are so many good stunt people. We want to see them more than one hit a shot. Please. I mean, if they really suck, Please. I guess you did a good job. But <laughs> like, the only time I can be like, "Why'd you cut so much?" It's like, well, it didn't. It didn't come out as good as we wanted yeah. it to be. You know, I'm like, all right. Well, but I it, mean, let, sh- you need. It's fine. medieval times. Show people and how clumsy this armor can be sometimes. Yeah, and it's that you hard can, to move in. It's and, hard to move and around. And you can afford to make a mistake in your armor because you're rich as fuck. Swords are kind of heavy, and it's hard. They're not lightsabers. They don't just fly yeah. through the air like, you know. Uh, Sir, Cr- Sir Kristen is an, or Kriston, what's it, whatever his name, the good looking guy that's a commoner. I think it's going to be an interesting character. Yeah, the guy who beat Damon. In yeah. a in a world that, or I should say, a show that seems dominated by these godlike men, it might be cool to have just like a guy that's really good to yeah. kind of be a vehicle for us, you know? Sure. Maybe he gets to be a Kingsguard. Maybe. Do that one king. For was, the princess. He was yeah. a Dorn, right? He's Dornish? He, he's Dornish. Yeah, Dornish. Yeah. I.e., very handsome. <laughs> That's all that means. Well, no. when you when you no, it is it's from yeah. Dorn. Yeah. But whenever you get wine, if you get Dornish wine, it's just a little bit better. It's when it's yeah. a Dornish guy, they're they they tend it's, to be a little better look good looking. Yeah, okay. you know, you get men from the north. They're hefty men. They're strong, hefty Northerners. and they uh, hot. They're Dorn. bearded, and they you know they drink mead, and they're warriors, but they're not like. You know, they're not beautiful. They're not gotcha. beautiful. <laughs> the north are the hefty guys. Yeah. The west then has the Dorn, right? Uh, the south. Is it yeah. south? Yeah. And those are the good. And then across yeah. the river is the incest. And we have to, re- yeah, right. <laughs> and we got to remember, Aegon the Conqueror, whenever he took over, could not conquer Dorn. They are. The we do un- not bow. <laughs> we do not bow. They are the unbent, unbroken, right? Unbowed, unbent, unbroken. Yeah. So yeah. in Westeros, Dorn has that reputation of like, well, we couldn't stop us. So this is going to be a cool character, I think. Uh, but we, yeah. we didn't really get much from him. And that was the wheelchair guy, right? Yes. Yeah. Can't even and uh, obviously the Red Viper. Yeah. yeah. And the snakes with the mm-hmm. poison. Yep. Yeah. No, uh, this really felt to me like a setup, and then we're going to to go a little bit. You know, I was interested to see, like, what's the hook going to be? Because the hook in the first Game of Thrones is Jamie throws Bran off the tower. Push and you're like, What? Okay, gotta watch the next one. Things, I, this do for, one, things I do for love. Yeah, but this one, it was more like, it's like, hey guys, remember Game of Thrones? Here's the music. I'm like, okay, cool. And they're like, please come back. <laughs> That's what it felt like to me. <laughs> I don't know about you. I mean, I don't know. I think the highlight was probably the brutality of the birth. Ah, uh, that was hard to watch, yeah. So like, the idea of what you're willing to sacrifice to make the kingdom whole. 
Emma, I think Emma was her name. Uh, that actress was so good because I had to sit my like I had to tell myself, "Hey, that's an actress acting. That's not just someone in pain." That's how good she was. It was really uncomfortable. Yeah. I sometimes not confuse myself, but I need to prioritize. Like, do I care what's happening to the character, or do I appreciate how good the performance is? <laughs> I do that sometimes, and that one I, I think I did both pretty pretty easily. We also have Q and A's. We got Q and A's. Let's check some out. I'm gonna do the best ones. So, guys, we're using a hashtag. You know what? I'll wait because I don't know what it is. <laughs> Hot D. Hot D. <laughs> That's what George R. R. Martin's calling it. What? In his blogs. Hot D. Oh, is he? Yeah. I mean, House of the Dragon. I think we have Hot D Q and A. All right, guys, so uh, on Twitter, we're going to be having a hashtag where you can ask questions, thoughts, theories, uh, cool references, and we're going to read through them. Um, but we're only going to be reading through the absolute best, most creative ones. So if you submit this season, make sure, make it good. Be unique. Uh, hashtag Hot D. <laughs> Q&A. Q&A. All right, we're going to start with Lan, who says, I know you don't like to compare things, but which premiere was your favorite, this or the Game of Thrones premiere? That's not Season fair. one, episode one. Not a fair question. It's not a fair question. It's not fair. Yeah, but I mean, I, I would just say Game of Thrones season one, episode one. I, I, I've seen it too many times to not pick that one. But I mean, <clears throat> I, I quite enjoyed this premiere. But I need to watch more. It's kind of fucking Sean Bean. Sure. Yeah, he's right. And I have more connection to those characters as of right now, so I feel yeah. like that's unfair for. It. Yeah. I don't know, what do you think, Greg? I think the setup is more interesting. Hmm. Okay. Adida Vakvaid says, do you guys think that people who didn't watch Game of Thrones could have a good time with this show? And will there be a good introduction to the universe for new fans? P.S. Love you and sending tons of hugs from Thailand. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, I think, yeah, I think, think everything that you need to know for this show is explained in this show. Mm. I think if you have seen Game of Thrones, then there's a bit more that you can pick up on or yeah. connect dots to but I don't think it's hung so heavily on that you feel like oh I'm, I'm missing something there Yeah. so far I don't feel like this episode was requiring you to know Game of Thrones yeah. in order to watch this not yet I mean, maybe the season goes that way later maybe and I'd be like oh I was confused but I think of this and now I'm not confused but I would enjoy if you, people could maybe direct me a reactor that is going into this new and hasn't seen Game of Thrones. Because look, Blind Wave reactions, we have seen Game of Thrones. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about our fandom and what we like and what we don't like. We're not going to hold back. But I would like to see a reactor that maybe is going into this fresh and maybe yeah. has an interesting perspective. That would be a very interesting perspective. Yeah, so let me know. It was like back before of watching Game of Thrones. It's like, do you have book knowledge or not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? It's like that's a different perspective. Here it's it like, do you have previous yeah. knowledge or not? And just like you know, Calvin, when we were going through Game of Thrones, like I have some knowledge on the world, but again, because of the nature of how this thing is adapted, this is the real history, and I don't know the real history. I could be being lied to by a jester named Mushroom. <laughs> you know, fucker. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's cool to have like a little bit of knowledge to be able to to foundation ourselves, and then you guys primarily can really experience the story new. His name was Mushroom? Yeah. Explains a lot of those tall You know, tales. the the, uh, the Septon, the priest that was the source for this book, everything's proper, and everything's nice and noble, but the jester, he knows all the backstabbing and the murderers and the stories, and he knows how to entertain you. So maybe when he was telling the stories of what happened during this time, He's embellishing, or he's telling the truth, and the Septon's the one that's keeping things under wraps, you know? It's a really interesting book. I encourage people to check it out, but maybe wait after the season so that you can be surprised. Sure. Like, it, does the Jester have an entertainment value thing that yeah. he's doing? Or does the priest have a, like, is there, like, yeah. an agenda that a priest is like, well, this is the route we're going yeah. for, so this is how I'll tell it? And the know. way George R. R. Martin talks, like, even the Meister who's writing the history can have a bias, Right. Like, one sure. of the conspiracies is that Meisters, when they write letters for their lords, might change some words and recontextualize things and just poke and prod a little bit, you know? We can't trust them, can we? Sure. It's like if you were picking someone to write a story about Hitler. Yeah. Who you pick will probably really change how that story sure. is. Sure, exactly. Told, you know? <laughs> I can definitely see that. 
Uh, D. As Brandon an Thomas, example. as an extreme example, but yeah, extreme. D. Brandon Thomas says, it has been well documented across social media that fans were not really happy with how the original series ended. With this being a prequel series, what are some of your expectations or hopes that you think could help the series apart from Game of Thrones? It is crazy that Game of Thrones was like number one in terms of tie-in, merch sales, all that stuff. Like pop and, culture. And it completely dropped... But HBO, they realized that value. It could still be there if you, if you do it right. I guess. Sure. That's yeah. My only thing. I mean, it'd be interesting if there's a way of taking this prequel series and somehow adding to Game of Thrones to where it could. That's the thing. Like, do you distance yourself from that as much as you can, or do you try to like embrace it and make it better? Yeah. It's like what you do with the. Uh, like, Star Wars had extended books and stuff, and sometimes reading some of these books changed and altered the way Agreed. you would think about the movies or a yeah. segment of the movies or something like that, you know? Right. And I, uh, I wonder, if, could you do that with a prequel series of Game of Thrones where maybe you can see a person or a king going mad and it helps to yeah. add towards, like, Daenerys or something? or The coin I, flip kind yeah. of idea. I, see, I, 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 I something you can do or with Or maybe that? she had a dragon dream that we never got to see that explained why that shit happened. Because my main thing with the original series is that I think... It needed, it needed more time. I think what I we got that. with a yeah. lot of the ending of Game of Thrones could work. Mm -hmm. But I think it was the, the route to get there was hastened. Hastened? Uh, yeah. I mean, straight up. Overly I'm, hastened. I, I'm pretty confident in... Like, <clears throat> I think that D&D, &D, when they were adapting George's work and had, like, the blueprint, did a very good job. But whenever they ran out of that and they just had these... Uh, you know, cliff note version of what he was thinking because he, again, he hasn't written the end, you know. He's two books away and it's been fucking 15 years. Um, th I think they were just kind of like, all right, well, we're good at this. We can do exactly what George R. R. Martin does. And the answer to that is no, no, you can't. Well, it really it was, we don't want to do this anymore. Exactly. We want to be in Star Wars. Yeah, let's stuff. wrap this up. So I'm not a marketer, and I know that the key to marketing is being like, you know, get your point across in one sentence, and I can't do that. But what I would tell people is that George R. R. Martin was heavily involved with Game of Thrones when you liked it, and the stuff that you didn't like, he wasn't there. He's heavily involved in this one. You know, the, the classic thing of like, the gold cloaks, right? We had the gold cloaks back in here. Like in the first couple seasons of, of Game of Thrones, you had the gold cloaks and backstabbing, and they're going after Ned and Peter Baelish, and that's all cool. But then, like, season eight, they're talking about, like, eating crabs to get boners. And that's pretty much all they did. You know? Yeah. Like, there's just a certain quality and uh, story progression that Martin brings to these to the series that was lacking there. So... Crab boners. What? You have Craggius the crab feeder here. The crab feeder. Yeah. That's what he does to his enemies. That's terrifying to think about. <laughs> but I love a little sentence like that can like put a whole world in your head. <laughs> Is he trying to give the crab boners? No. That was that's separate. Yeah. So that's season eight. That's D and D. Oh, yeah. Man. So there's no boners in this one. Well, there's plenty of boners. There were Did plenty you of not boners. see the whorehouse? Dude, I Street. loved that guy that's straight up in the middle of doggy style, and he starts talking, and he just, he just, he just turns he didn't around. Even turn around. He doesn't even turn around. I he just looks like this. I like, he's like, we'll wait until we're done. I don't think, yeah, I don't think he pulled out or anything. He just, <laughs> he just looked. And like, she's like, looking too. Like, that one guy's getting head, and he's like, silence! That kind of stuff cracks me up. I have great enjoyment, and not in the way maybe intended. Anyway, that's the answer. Hope you liked it. It's just interesting to see the nonchalance of sex, yeah. considering that the U.S. is like, oh, no, titties, cover them up. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> sure. Uh, Tara says, the first episode was mind-blowing, and it provided more than what I expected. Can we please talk about Daemon Targaryen? He stole every scene, and his dragon, Caraxus, is so freaking cool. Who is your favorite so far, and what do you want to see happen in the season? Uh, Caraxus, all the dragons. I love that. In, in season eight, in the last couple seasons of Game of Thrones, you had Drogon, and then you had two other Drogons that were slightly kind of colored differently, but you couldn't tell them apart unless you were told. And it's boring, in, the, in my opinion. These dragons look cool. Are but they all yeah. named Rax something? I, don't, I mean, I don't Raxus, know. Raxus, Cyrax? Cyrax. I'm sure there's going to be. Well, I, I don't, don't want to go into spoilers. Dagax, yeah. I don't want to go too far into spoilers, though. If, if more get introduced, Ajax. which we know there's ten, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, Ajax. <laughs> this is Aegon. Johnny Cage. <laughs> the dragon comes out. <laughs> no, uh, I thought, especially the red serpent dragon, I, I loved they kept that detail that he has a more, like, Baronosaurus long neck he looks, because sure. it's a, it had, like, a birth defect. It looks like a snake headed turtle. Yeah. He, uh, like a with wings. Like a Drake. Didn't he have, like, lower wings towards the back of his, uh, yeah. Body as well, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Like, as opposed to just having the, the wings, mm-hmm. it looked like kind on the, of like a, the shoulders. It wasn't yeah. on his tail, like uh, like Toothless or something like mm-hmm. that from How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah. But it was like just before his tail, it felt like there were like littler wings there. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> as I thought I saw, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, I mean, we'll get, we'll get into more of it too as we go, but. It was just interesting. And I like them having this different look um, for the dragons as well. And that, that's just one of them. Well, yeah, like right there. Yeah, 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 I see what you're talking about. Like, see how his legs yeah. look like they have like little wings on little, them. Little, like yeah, little flaps. Which I thought was interesting because I don't remember Even that. His tail he has a, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. I don't remember that being tail. on other ones, but like maybe if his he has that longer neck, he needs a little bit more wind yeah. resistance or something on the backside. Stabilization. Yeah, I mean, you know, there, no dragon is the same. That's why, like, when they say that this Targaryen rides this dragon. That's it. <laughs> you know, sure. like, again, they put dragon eggs in with, uh, the, like with the babies. Um, but also, you can also inherit dragons from your ancestors, too, or from your, your parents as well. This is why Rick was asking if they spewed out other stuff besides fire. Because, yeah, like, sure. you know, D&D has, like, these dragons yeah. are different, and they yeah. have different well, breath. And they're they shaped different. The only yeah. thing... Yeah, horns, yeah there's a very different, you know, feel to them, and there's good ones and bad ones, and... The only thing that we saw that's different uh, is in the final season where, uh, or I guess the second to final season of Game of Thrones where the dead dragon spews like blue fire. Yeah. yeah. I think that's really the only difference that we've been presented in the world so far. That can just be a heat. Yeah. Maybe older dragons have better breath control mm-hmm. and can spew out hotter fire or something. And, and just the older you get, the bigger you get, the more fire you have and the more intelligent they become. Though, what do we get from the undead dragon? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Is that what you're talking about? That one? It had like a blue fire. Okay. It burnt the wall, right? It melted. Yeah, it melted the wall. Yeah. Shouldn't take that dragon. Uh, Matt Cronin says, do you guys think there will be any signs of the White Walkers or the Three-Eyed Raven in this story, or are they reserved for the original series? I don't don't think I would do the Walkers, but maybe the Raven could be utilized in some way. I mean, the Walkers are what they're talking about in the dragon, right? Yeah. I mean, I would imagine so, but they don't realize it They don't know that. You know? Like maybe we the see the dream, <laughs> yeah, or something, or some form of the yeah. dream. But I doubt we see the actual. I mean, walkers. if yeah. you think about it, there's a weirwood tree at you know the the keep there, and Bran will eventually be able to look through weirwood tree eyes, no matter the time. Mm-hmm. So sure, yeah, kind of. In theory, Bran could be here now at that tree, the three eyed raven, seeing yeah. what's going on. But he's actually in the series much hundreds of years in the future. Yeah, sure. So, like I was saying, the Thread Raven may be a thing you could deal with, and that could be kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, there I don't were feel even like we theories knew much about him, right? Like we met him in the roots. Uh, we know he's a Targaryen. Was I he believe. supposed to be impossibly old, or is he just a normal mortal? Impossibly old. Okay. Yeah. So, like, he would probably already be there in those roots. He I don't know. That. Maybe. Or could I, we see him before he's in the roots? I don't know exactly. I need to look up the lore about that. Maybe that's something that if I find out and it comes up, we can talk about. But. It does bear a striking resemblance to King. Yeah, Max von Sydow. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, I think that he's like that character, the Three-Eyed Raven. He's not quite a Targaryen. He's like a splinter group, like Blackfire maybe. I don't know. I'll, I'll have – go down in the comments. People will have explained it already. <laughs> Oh, this is interesting. Cody Mahan says, At the end, Viserys announced himself king of the Andals, the Ro- uh, Ronar, and the First Men. We learned that the Ronar from... Uh, these are a lot of names that I have to try to pronounce, but uh, Renea is studying early in the episode, uh, I think under the tree, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they mentioned the Ronar. Uh, David and Dan chose to exclude that title, the, you know, the king of the Ronar, uh, or Dornish is the way you would say it. Uh, he showed, like, D&D didn't have that in Game of Thrones, and it always bothered George R. R. Martin. That the, no, that's, that's one of his titles. It's very important. So they purposely put it in here just to kind of stick to D&D. Good. I think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they would have taken that out. Why take that out and leave the other two? 
I mean, some people got really annoyed when Daenerys kept going on with her titles. <laughs> sure. sure. Breaker Chains, Mother of Dragons. I get that. First of her name. She shed a little bit of a name. That's what you do. Uh, when Cody, you shit, you get titles. Cody also has a cool observation. Viserys asked uh, Renea to promise him to protect the secret of the dream. When Jon was born to Lyanna and Rhaegar, Lyanna asked Ned Stark to promise her to protect the secret of the child that we that would become the leader of, in that dream. I love that touch. Interesting observation. I think that is cool. And knowing that John is a secret Targaryen makes it even like a more like uh, I don't know family thing. Like these secrets that are passed on. <clears throat> this is ha- this has to be the last one. Uh, I will not pronounce this name. I T Z R H Y S X D says. In case you guys didn't know. Shout out to the great Michael Carter, who played King Jaehaerys tonight. Jaehaerys being the older guy at Harrenhal, because yeah. he, in Return of the Jedi, was Bib Fortuna. Really? <laughs> I'm like, fuck yeah! That's Bib Fortuna. Yeah, that's Bib Fortuna. Nice. That's amazing. Huh. So really cool, and of course, we had to sneak in Star Wars somewhere. Yeah. All right, guys, that was the first episode. Uh, we need to come up with a poll for our people over at Patreon.com/slash/BlindWave to vote in and discuss. All right, guys, so for the poll for this week, we want to know if if this premiere here has gotten you excited and interested to jump back into the Game of Thrones world, or do you still have some reluctance because of the the landing that we had back in the end of Game of Thrones Mm. seasons? Um, I think mine was more so the route that we took to get where we got, and... uh, As long as this has a decent journey of it all, I think I'm interested enough. I'm just... Mm -hmm. I don't think that they were wrong in the ending. It's just we could have had a little bit more setup. We could have had more content. Yeah, mm. and maybe have a in little bit context. longer fight with the Night King. That could have been cool too. Maybe a maybe. little bit. <laughs> maybe this hundreds of years prophecy thing could have maybe been a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, a little bigger. A little more. Yeah. I don't know. No, as far no. as the setup of the story goes, I'm much more interested in this one. I think, okay. but there's no like, like. The Lannisters as characters stood out to me much more than any character in this did. Agreed. Yeah. Sure. Okay. What would you say, Calvin? I am hopeful. Excited. Mm. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Is that because you had Magic Spoon earlier? Yeah. Mm. It really woke me up. Make sure you use the code word BlindWay for five... What is it? Five dollars. Five dollars. Five dollars off! Five dollars! Down in the description. Guys, thank you very much for watching House of the Dragon with us. We hope you enjoyed and we hope that you subscribe for new videos out every single week. Uh, Also, we have Patreon where you can get full length, but you can also check it out right now in the description.